All right, today we're going to talk about cultural differences between Germany, where I am from, and Malaysia, the country where I have been traveling for the past nine months. And yeah, while I'm traveling here, I encountered lots of cultural differences. And many of you guys asked me to uh, talk about these differences in detail. And um, yeah, I'm joined today again by Su Min. You Hi, probably everyone. remember her from my previous video as well. And yeah, you're from Malaysia. Yes, I am. So you can uh, help me to uh, talk about the uh, cultural differences. And you have also been in Europe, right? Yes, I have been. So I spent the last five years in Scotland so, studying at a university. So she also knows a little bit about European culture. Yeah, so, I hope so. Let's talk <laughs> about different topics today. We have different topics. I uh, will write them down here. So we're going to talk about these topics today. And if you're just interested in one specific topic, there will be timestamps for each topic in the description and in the pinned comment, you can jump around to the different topics. And yeah, let's start talk about sure. all these topics. I'm keen to find out German culture. Oh yeah, let's find out what is interesting. What are the differences? All right. And uh, while we are talking about uh, these topics, we are going to have uh, dinner here at this uh, restaurant here, which is uh, popular spot here in Malacca, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, so uh, yeah. And that also leads us right to the first topic, which is food. So since we are eating, we are going to talk about food. Yeah, so right? food is a really, really huge topic. And I asked you guys also on Instagram what topics I should cover. And I think 80 to 90% of the answers were about food, food related uh, questions. Mm -hmm. So let's first, because food is a huge topic, yeah. And uh, it's also it's very different in Germany, like the whole eating culture and what do we eat, when do we eat, how do we eat. So there's a lot we can cover now. And the type of food that the we eat. The type of food. So maybe let's uh, first start with like, first of all, like, in Germany, we don't have street food. We don't have? Not don't really, have not really. Uh -huh. We don't have like a street food culture. We don't have night markets where you can get food. Like, oh, not the away. pasta malam. Definitely. No pasta malams. Uh -huh. And yeah, street food is not really a, a thing in Germany. And when I came to Asia last year, I mean, I came to Bangkok and Bangkok, Bangkok is known for street food. Exactly. It's on every corner. It was, it was really, really uh -huh. new for me. So how was it for you? When you came to Europe, did you have to get used to not having street food? Street food. Or did um, you start to cook by yourself at home? Yes. Or how, how was it? So um, not having street food is one of the many problems that I encountered when I first um, went to Scotland. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest problem was that um, it's difficult to find food that I was once familiar with, Asian yeah, food course, yeah. over there. Like but the weird thing about it, I mean about um, the food culture in Europe at that time to me was um, they don't sell food in restaurants after a certain hour. Yeah, that's that's one thing as well. Did like, you realize that? Like not only we don't have really street food, so uh -huh. when you go out in Germany, you more like go to proper restaurants. Proper restaurants. Like we don't have these small like street food style kitchens. Uh -huh. Like here you can sit right by the street, like mm. these roadside stalls, I we know. don't have that in Germany. And the food that you're having now, it actually opens until late night, close to 12 a.m. Yeah. But you know, in um, German, Germany, and also like in many European countries, most of the restaurants, they it, only serve drinks after 9 p.m. So after 9 p.m. the kitchen will be closed. Or mm, yeah, many, many places they close, close the kitchen at 9 to 10. Yeah. And then of course we have some late night snack shops, uh -huh. like especially uh, like in an area where you can find nightclubs mm. or bars that have open all night. Yeah. Around this area you can find like small corner shops where you can s get like snacks to go. So, but, but there's all of no like street food stalls no, around, really, like right? the, the only thing that we have that would be like comparable to street food is döner kebab. Do you know döner kebab? Oh, kebab! Kebab, it's it. like kebab, yeah. yeah. It's like a Turkish bread with meat inside. Uh -huh. The slices of meat, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. like, That is like the, the only thing really that we have that would, should be comparable to, to street food. Exactly. But other than that, we only have like uh, most of the time proper restaurants. Proper restaurants yeah. that serve food until a, an hour. Exactly. So you don't walk out to a street and say, hey, that's a store that sells like something that exactly, you like. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so when I came to Asia last year, it was a totally new food world for mm, me. Mm. And also like in Germany, since we only have these proper restaurants normally, mm -hmm. not really street food, many people do not eat out every day. 
they it's very eat uncommon to uh, go out to eat on a daily basis. I know. Like and here in Malaysia, like I think most people go out, out to eat every day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, because I just started working. So um, during lunch break, I try to cook my own um, lunch and bring it to work. But most of the time, my other colleagues, they don't cook lunch. So they actually um, would eat out. So they would ask me to eat out. And it's actually very affordable to eat out in Malaysia compared to that's when yeah. I was in Europe. That's mm. also a big difference. Like eating out in Germany, mm. it's of course, because it's mainly proper restaurants, it's yeah. really expensive. Exactly. Mm. And because of the, the prices, people don't go out as much as in, in Asia or in Malaysia. Um, for example, give, let, let's talk about prices a little bit. You so, mean people uh, do go out in Malaysia? People you in Malaysia. The oh. You said the opposite. Oh, in Malaysia, can, like, people go out more because it's more affordable to go out. Yeah. And in Germany, because of the prices, you don't go out so many times. I guess so. So mm. let's talk about prices. Um, for mm. example, like the cheapest thing you can get like as a street food, like the, the kebab I was talking about, mm. that's like the cheapest thing you can get on the streets in Germany. Yeah. And that's like the cheapest one you can find are uh, four to five euro, which is like 20 to 25 ringgit. Yeah, that's so around around really six dollars. Mm. So that is like the cheapest thing you can find. Talking about street food, I'm sure you have tried many rotis, right? You did yes. a video on trying all the types of roti. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's also like one of the street food that we have in Malaysia. And one roti itself, if you have it at... Uh, yeah, for example, what's the price of the roti? You can get it for like 3 ringgit, right? You can get it at 3 ringgit, but a plain one, an empty one, yeah. that would be less than 2 ringgit sometimes. Yeah, so, so that's like 20 to 30 cents in euro or like 50 mm -hmm. cents in dollar. Exactly. So that's how cheap you can get food here. And maybe talk about like something that is comparable. For example, what is really popular here as well is a chicken chop with french fries, which you can get here as low as six ringgit. So that's like one euro 20. And uh, we have chicken chop with french fries. That's also something you can get in Germany. Mm -hmm. But in Germany, like the cheapest version of it you can get would be around eight euro. Eight euro. And that's like, like $10 or like 40 ringgit. Yeah. For for a cheap chicken chop, you can get for for like takeaway, for example, or in a restaurant. Forty ringgit. Forty ringgit. 40 yeah. Forty ringgit. So that would be able to feed a family of maybe <laughs> four, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you see that the prices in Europe for for eating outside mm -hmm. are very. Uh, it's kind yeah. of expensive. I guess it's because of the currency exchange rate as well. Yeah. Right, fun fact Ken, did you know that I started cooking at home when I went over to Scotland because of Because the it's too expensive to eat mm -hmm. out? It is. Yeah. It was like very expensive for me as a Malaysian to spend my Malaysian ringgit. Yeah, I, can I imagine, mean, yeah. yeah, exactly. So at that time, I think the um, pound, like British pound to Malaysian oh. exchange rate, that yeah. was like one pound to close to seven ringgit yeah, so that yeah. was crazy expensive for me so that it's, was it's when also, it's also uh -huh. expensive for for locals like like i said before even for, mm -hmm. for german for german salary they don't go out eating every day because also for for germans mm -hmm. it's expensive to to eat out in germany exactly so. and i realized that even when they eat out say for example um during lunch break at work yeah. they eat um sandwich yeah. instead of a warm yeah. meal because a warm meal yeah. would probably cost yeah, more yeah, many people do that. than a sandwich. Also many mm -hmm. people like uh, if they have lunch break at work, they prepare the meals at home and then take them to lunch because yes. Less, That's more affordable. More affordable yeah. I so see. you started to cook at home then? Yeah, I started to cook so at home. So did you have to, to learn it? How is it in Malaysia? Learned. Like, do you, do you learn how to cook at home? Um, I wasn't allowed to the kitchen yeah. when I was younger ah. <laughs> because <laughs> okay. my grandma was in charge of the kitchen and she said, don't come here and kachau. Have you heard of the word kachau? No, what is that kachau? means um, disturb in ah, okay. Malay. Mm -hmm. okay. So don't come here and kachau me. So that was her area. Wow, so I only okay. started cooking when I went abroad to save money. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I learned from um, talking to my grandma on the phone and mm, also okay. watching YouTube videos. Mm. Watching YouTube videos. It really okay. helped. And then I started because I really like taking photos. So I started taking photos and videos of the food that I made. So did you did you make Malay food then, or did you try to, to most of the time, uh, make local food in Scotland? So um, most of the time, I make use of whatever ingredients that I can get home in the local market um, back in Scotland, yeah, okay, and okay. then I try to recreate some of the dishes that I miss in Malaysia. Ah, yeah. uh -huh. 
so I started taking photos and everything, um, and my friends noticed it and they encouraged me to start a food blog. Oh, okay, uh -huh. yeah, okay, yeah. Yes, yeah, so also for me, like, do you I, cook? do you I cook? cooked every day in Germany for myself. Yeah. Really? Like uh, when I moved out of uh, my mm. home, like for university, mm. I moved out at mm. home, and then I started, yeah, to, to cook every day for myself. Mm. So oh, because yeah, of course, it's too, especially as a exactly. student, it's too expensive to mm. go out. So I, I cooked for myself every day, and I'm it was totally normal. Yeah. So maybe like There's two, something. three times in a month, There's I maybe I order I food. Out. Also, ordering food oh. is expensive. Maybe you can uh, let me know in the comments or let us know in the comments. Uh, do you cook for yourself at home, or do you eat out every day, or ordering food every day? Let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, for me that was a huge change when I came to Asia. I stopped uh, cooking mm -hmm. and I started to eat out almost every day. <laughs> and yeah, let me show you a little bit about the food we're having here. Wow, and yeah, it's this. like a self cooking here. So we uh, cooked it into uh, it's peanut sauce here. Yeah, peanut, peanut sauce. sauce. And yeah, you dip it into so it's like satay style. Mm -hmm. Let and, me show uh, you. Yeah, we. Uh, it's a very thick um, peanut sauce. It's spicy and it's also slightly sweet, right? Do you think it's slightly sweet? I, I really like it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and actually, if you want to see. Us reviewing the food, you can check out her Instagram. What is it again? Nibbles on Mars. Nibbles on Mars. Check out her Instagram and uh, you can go. see how we review uh, the food here. And she yeah. actually she has a food food blog on, uh, on Instagram. Instagram, so check it out. We also one thing that is a difference uh, in uh, between Germany and Malaysia is uh, the topic about the pork. Yeah. Do you know pork. that every time I make a video? And uh, I eat rice in the video and I eat it with a fork. And every time I do that in a the video, there are at least 10 comments. Ken, why do you eat uh, rice with a fork? Yeah, you, should you, you should not do that. You should not do that. That is so wrong. Do that. <laughs> Guys, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't eat rice with a fork. Who does that? <laughs> so in Malaysia, it's you eat rice with a spoon. Mm -hmm. So we don't do that in Germany. In Germany, uh, you eat rice with a fork. Mm. And uh, I'm doing that all my life, so it's my habit for 29 years. And so. I realized something is that in Malaysia, usually if you get a plate of um, um, food, right? Yeah. So you get um, both a fork and also a spoon. Is that right? Do you notice that? No. What? No, like a plate of food, like yeah. chicken rice. So they give a spoon and a fork to you. Ah, but uh, the fork here is for the meat, right? Yeah, so it's you, you are supposed to use it together. Ah. Mm. Oh, I didn't but really then in about Europe, it. it's usually the spoon for the soup. Yeah, right? that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. And fork comes with a knife, because that's for steak. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we use uh, a spoon just for soup, actually. Just for just soup. Just for soup. Just exactly. for soup. Yeah. All right. The next topic we're going to talk about is uh, religion, because mm -hmm. religion is uh, a really uh, big part of uh, the culture in Malaysia. Like, I mean, uh, most people here are religious, right? They are. They actually most people are. are. So we have the, the main religion here is uh, it's the, the Muslims. Muslim. The Muslim. Mm -hmm. Then we also have, what else do we have here? We have um, the Buddhists. The Buddhists? We, yeah, like myself, I am a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. And we also have Christians here. Christian here. Uh -huh. Are you a Christian yourself? No, I'm actually, I'm not religious at all. Oh. I, I got this question many times uh, from, from you guys before. I'm, I'm not religious, no. I see. Because also, like, uh, that's the, the difference is here in Malaysia, religion is a, a big thing. It's like, mm. you can hear the, the prayer from the mosque five times every day. So wherever you go in Malaysia, religion is uh, it's all around you. Yeah, it is. Right? And, and then, you would notice there are um, many mosques, temples yeah, and churches exactly. like around. Mosques are everywhere and you can also mm. find temples everywhere. Exactly. And in Germany, religion is not, not that big part of our daily life. Mm -hmm. And also most people are not really religious. For example, I, mm. I know nobody, not in my family, not from my friends, nobody who that? goes to church. Really? No. It's totally, it's not a thing in Germany. I see. So, um, fun fact, another fun fact for you, Ken. <laughs> because um, I'm currently working with the government. Mm -hmm. So, um, in every government, I mean, every office of the government, so we have a fixed um, working hour mm -hmm. and also a fixed rest hour. So, from um, Monday to Thursday, our rest hour is from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. But yeah. on Friday, when the Muslims have to do their Friday prayers, ah, they have a longer lunch break ah, so just even to they, accommodate they, the praying yeah. time. Mm. I also saw that before, like for example in hotels or in places where mm -hmm. I go, sometimes they have like a break, they, 
the, the reception, there's nobody at the reception because it's praying time, right? Exactly. So and they yeah. would definitely prepare a place um, for you to pray. So but here everybody, it's like, it's not a problem, like, like when you want to check into some places and uh -huh. there's nobody at reception because it's praying time, nobody complains about that, right? Nobody complains about it. Yeah, for they example, would understand. In mm -hmm. Germany, if you, uh, if that would be the same case in Germany, like and the reception hotel would nobody be there mm -hmm. because of praying time. So many people would complain about that. Did you complain about it when you encountered? No, 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 no. <laughs> totally Are you not. Sure? For me, it's totally not a problem. I, I love to experience okay. new cultures, and I'm. Okay. I think I'm very good at adapting to new cultures. That's why I love traveling so much. Okay. But if you would, oh, really if you nice. would introduce that in Germany, like, like a hotel and uh, Muslim mm, people mm, would work mm, at that hotel, mm. it would be really, really hard to introduce that to mm. the German guests. That okay, there will be no break because mm. we have to pray. Yeah. So because just religion is not a big thing in Germany. It, it's not. It's, it's not, not. Yeah. So I it see. would be really hard to, to introduce such things. Do you find things. it interesting that we have different religions and races and we still live in totally. harmony? That is one thing I really like about Malaysia, like the cultural diversities. We mm. have so many different religions here, like like you told uh, the, mm. the, the Buddha, uh, Buddhism people. Yeah. You have Christian people here, although that's the minority. And, yeah. And the Muslims, but it and seems also for Hinduism. me. Hinduism. Hinduism. Mm. The, the Indian people. Yeah, uh, and many and others, um, many other religions, like um, mm -hmm. if you go to um, East Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak, yeah. you would find um, more religions oh, over okay. there, but that's um, um, the minority. Yeah. yeah, yeah. that's something for me as a foreigner to see that that's multiculturalism in Malaysia, it's really nice to mm -hmm. see that, how everybody lives peacefully together Good job, and, Malaysians. and how everybody is accepting uh, the other cultures. For example, I did one video in Jahoa uh -huh. about multiculturalism. Maybe you guys remember the video. There was one street and in, within like 100 meter there was uh -huh. a church, there was a mosque, there was a, a Hindu temple and what else? A Chinese temple was, a Buddhism temple. So within a few hundred meters you could find four or five different religious in, religions in one place. Mm -hmm. And that is like a multiculturalism, we don't have that much in Germany. And that's something that I'm really proud of, of my country. You, you guys from Malaysia, you can be proud of that. That is something really special and uh, something really, really nice to experience here in Malaysia as a foreigner. Yes, Saya Anak Malaysia. That means like I'm from Malaysia? I'm, um, oh, no, I, Anak? I'm a kid of Malaysia. Oh, I'm a Malaysian. <laughs> okay. I'm a proud Malaysian. <laughs> can so, um, from your videos, I know that you have been in Malaysia since um, just before the MCO started, yeah, right? Yeah, so since March. Uh -huh. yeah. But you went to Bangkok for studies before that. So you have been away from home for so long. Don't you miss your family? <laughs> Don't you miss it's them? Also, it's also a question I, uh -huh. I get a lot actually. And yes, of course, I, I miss my family and uh, my sister and also my friends. But um, yeah, talking about a family topic, mm -hmm. like in Germany, uh, you don't have such a strong family life really? in most of the cases uh -huh. um, that, like you have it in Malaysia. Um, for example, in Malaysia, I think it's very common to live together with the family even when you're an yeah. adult, right? I mean, I live with my parents. Do you live with your parents no. back at home? No. no even if you're in the same city, you don't? No. Really? I mean, some, some people do. I mean, most of the things I say in this video are just my perspective. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or that the, the things that I'm, I'm known to, but I think also in general it's totally uncommon mm. to live together with your family once you are like over 20, over 18, over 20. Okay. So Even most, if you are working in the same city, like in a town, in the same town, would I you still, move out? I still wouldn't uh, live at home, even if I would okay. stay in the same city like my, my family. Okay. Because I just, yeah, I want to have my, my own apartment and yeah. I want to have the freedom uh -huh. of being able to invite friends or guests every time I want without disturbing somebody. Okay. So wow. and I know? hope I hope my parents are not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> they might think that you are the bad influence for me to move out. <laughs> uh, most most people in Germany move out of home once they finish with the school. Mm. So then they either they start working mm -hmm. or they go to university. Yeah. And that's the time when most of the people in all Germany in general move out of, move of, home, out of yeah. home i see also some people like when the university is in the same mm. city mm. then maybe they they stay at home to to save money mm -hmm. because you don't yeah. have to pay for an own apartment yeah, to save money 
but at the latest point you move out is mm. when you start working. So when oh, you earn your own I money, see. you you move out. So that's the latest point. Yeah. I think for Malaysians, I mean for my circle of friends, right? So if you are in Malacca and if you work in Malacca or study in Malacca, you would stay with your family. All, all unless, life. All life. unless, unless you get married. Ah, okay. You get married and yeah. then you will just move in with your partner okay. to, to a new house, to a new place. Okay, but how is it like in case you are, you don't have, a, you don't marry uh -huh. and you work in the same city like your family lives, uh -huh. would you stay at home like forever? Mm, that I'm curious to find out. I'm not so <laughs> sure. I'm not at that stage yet. <laughs> Let me know in the comments guys, how is it in your, in your family? Yeah. Did, you, did you move out? Do you like to stay at, at your family's place? How yeah, is it? Um, I mean, I can't answer it on behalf of Malaysians right now because I haven't reached that stage. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'll let you know when <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> also, like, uh, I think also here it's more common that uh -huh. more generations live in one house. Uh, like live in one house. The grandma, the grandpa, ah. the, your parents. That was like, I mean, it was like this it, for me like when, I was younger, yeah. when I was younger. When I was younger. So my parents, my grandparents, and my siblings and I, we lived under the same roof. Oh yeah, that's yeah. also something like my, my grandparents, they, they even live in another city. I and mean, then all my, my uncles, mm. my aunts, we all have our own own households mm -hmm. so it's nobody living under under one roof oh right i mean mm, my mom's parents they are based in malacca yeah. so we used to live together yeah. but my um dad's parents they used to live in another state so ah. we would visit them um during festive season mm. that's also like um because i also sometimes get the question like how many times do you visit your family uh -huh. so when I was in Germany and uh, I was studying in a different city and my city was like, the city where I studied was yeah. like six hours away with the six train from mm -hmm. home. So I wasn't even home that many times. But of course, you, oh, I came back home like for my birthday, mm. for, for Christmas, mm. especially like How Christ regular do you go home at that time? Like during my study, when I was studying like in a city six hours away, uh. maybe four or five times a year. Four or five times a year, so yeah. that's every two months or yeah, so. Yeah, so like whenever there was a big holiday or festive mm -hmm. season or yes, birthday yeah. of, for me or for my mother maybe. I actually had a very similar experience to you. Yeah. So when I did, um, before I went over to Scotland to study at a university, I used to study in KL. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, that's, so that was also away from home. I mean away from home, but it's just two hours away, yeah. two hours drive away. And at that time, I would try to come home at first, at first, because that was my first time going uh, um, away from home. Yeah. So at first, I used to come home every, every week. <laughs> you guess it. <laughs> yeah. But I was 18 at that time. Yeah. And then, I mean, when I have exams and, you know, yeah, when things get easier. Longer, yeah. yeah. So I try to come back every two weeks yeah. because my parents would like to see me. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a difference because, yeah, mm -hmm. of course, family is also important in Germany. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we don't. It's not common to live together with your family for so long. So it's totally normal if you see your family only every few months. Every few months, yeah. I see. So like for the festival things, mm -hmm. or for birthdays. Well, totally. it's no, it's, yeah, it's really different here, <laughs> yeah, yeah. isn't it? Oh, I think, I think my, no, it's okay. I think I just saw my friend's parents. I'm not too sure if they saw me. I think maybe I should say hi to them later. Or oh, maybe they're, they're gonna start talking about you hanging out with a matsale here. Oh, a matsale? <laughs> oh my gosh. Actually, actually, I think they might say that. Yeah. Or they would say, um, that's another saying, like to describe um, foreigners. Like, um, yeah, matsale, in case you don't know, that's, uh, that's how uh, foreigners being called here. Yeah. Right? But especially that's European a, or Western mm, foreigners, right? That's, a, that's the Malay word for it. Yeah. But that's also um, in Hokkien, so that's a Mandarin dialect. We call you guys Ang Mo. Okay. So that means um, like red, um, red hair. Mm -hmm. So because you guys have like different hair colors, yeah. I mean for Europeans. Is it, is it uh, common that Malaysians date foreigners like Matsalis? Is that, um, is that uh, something common in Malaysia? Um, so far, I mean, unless you went abroad, so, I mean, it's quite difficult to meet someone. I mean, a mat sali on the street. I mean, there are, there are some, some Europeans living are, here. I mean, yeah, there are interracial couples. Yeah. But, 
I don't think it's as common as like um you know dating someone within the same race. Mm -hmm. But there are many interracial couples that I know. But it's still a minority mm, okay, in, okay. within the Malaysian society. What about you in German? Do you see a lot of like mm. interracial couples? Well, we don't have so many foreigners in Germany. Mm. Like we have a we have a really big uh, uh, Turkish community. Mm. By the way, fun fact: what many maybe don't know, I'm half Turkish. Are you? My father's from Turkey. Yeah. Really? I think many many don't even know that. You I'm, never said that. Yeah, you never I'm, said that. I'm a half German, half Turkish actually. So okay. uh, yeah, we have a huge Turkish community in Germany, and sometimes you can see couples like Turkish together mm. with a German. Mm. That's that's happening, but we don't have such a huge cultural diversity of mm. communities mm. in Germany. So I it's see. not that often you see that. I see. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's talk about dating in general. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, talking about dating uh, differences. Yeah. I think I saw some like funny comments under the YouTube video that you posted about us. Oh, like, video. Like, yeah, yeah, there were the quite a few comments Gosh. about uh, us two. <laughs> I know, Assam boy and As Assam girl. Ken found his Assam girl. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, how, how is dating in uh, Malaysia? Like how do you normally find a partner in Malaysia? Um, what would you say is the, the most common way to, to find your love here in Malaysia? <laughs> Well, I mean, according to what I see from my circle of friends, yeah. they usually know each other like from school mm -hmm. or from work yeah. or from university. So is it is it true? I, I heard from, is, it, like, is it true friends. that you uh, that it's common to date friends, yeah. like uh, somebody yeah. out of your friend circle that you date mm -hmm. people from your friend mm -hmm. circle? Is mm -hmm. that common? I think so because um, I know many friends who um, started dating each other yeah. back in secondary school, okay. so high school, yeah. uh -huh. and they are still dating each other till now. Oh, okay. And I think they might get married soon. So, so it's so you would say it's common to uh, meet your partner in your friend circle. Yeah. So they usually okay. started oh, out um, as platonic relationship. So started out that, with friends. That's a huge difference. Is it different yeah. in German? I totally, mean Germany. Totally, yeah. So tell us more. <laughs> so in Germany, I th I would say like once again that's, that's the experience from me and from my friend circle and what have mm -hmm. I known. Mm -hmm. So I can't speak for all Germans, of course, but yeah. oh, that's the same for me. Yeah, I'm of, not of speaking course, yeah. like yeah, of course, just yeah, it's, my it's friends. Always my our friends. perspective. Mm. But yeah, it's totally not common to date in your friend circle, mm -hmm. like. In many cases, once you are friends, mm. you are friends. And the friend most zone. The friend zone, exactly, yeah. It's, it's Do you have a not, word in not, German? Friend we say zone. friend zone as friend well, zone. Like the okay. English word, yeah. Okay. So it's not, I mean, it happens, of course, but mm. it's not common that the people who were like friends for many mm. years then suddenly start being a couple. Oh. So okay. it's, it's not that common to um, yeah, get a mm. partner within your friend circle, I would say. Mm -hmm. What's more, what's a really popular thing, like it sounds so like a cliche, like for movies, okay. that you find your partner like in a, in a club, in a nightclub uh -huh. or in a bar. Oh, really? Like when you go out, it's, it's very popular in Germany to go out on the weekends, like okay. partying, like the clubs or night bars. So did so, you miss the going out life? I mean, of course, at the moment you cannot go out because everything is closed because of COVID. Oh, that's true. So that's uh, true. yeah, I missed that a little bit going Wait, out on the weekends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. And no. yeah, that's where I think most. If I also if I think about my friend circle or me myself, mm. for example, I I met my ex girlfriend like very typical in a in a club. Like, okay. It's a very stereotype meeting her at the, the club, at the, the disco, and I think that's how many people get their partner like. When, you, when the they time. go out and then... So the pubs and bars... Mm -hmm. ah, and also what's, what's gotten popular in the, in the last years, I mean, how is that in online, Malaysia? It's online, online dating, dating, like Tinder. Tinder. Is, that, is that a big thing as well in Malaysia? To um, find your love? I mean, well, it depends on your circle of friends. Yeah, yeah I think it's based on individual. I have friends who use it, I have friends who are against it. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's the same everywhere. <laughs> but I think it's a very common thing um, that I saw when yeah. I was in Scotland. So many people were dating online. Yeah, it's, it's very, very uh, mm. typical or common in, in yeah, Germany. Yeah, but it's getting more popular here yeah. in Malaysia as yeah. well. Mm. I'm not too sure if I've met anyone online. Through YouTube, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, also in Malaysia, mm -hmm. I think it's more common to get married earlier, right? Early. What, what would you say is the typical age to, uh, to get married in Malaysia? 
I would say it's the range between 25 and 30. Okay. Between 25 and 30. And then it's not uh, so different than it. I thought it's, it's earlier actually in Malaysia. Earlier? Yeah. Like how yeah. early? Like for example, like many times I get asked, uh, like for example, it happens mm. many times when I take a taxi. Mm -hmm. and people, the taxi driver asks me, how old are you? 29. Oh, you're not married yet? Where's your wife? Oh. I hear that question so many times. So yeah. it gets me, the, it makes me feel like it's mm. uncommon in Malaysia to not be married at 29. Mm -hmm. So I'm 29 and I'm not married. I get what you mean. Because I work in a clinic myself yeah. and I saw many pregnant ladies coming into the clinic and every time when I write down their um, um, national identity number yeah. so I could see their birthdays, right? Mm -hmm. I know their birth date. So it's usually the same age as me. Okay. So they would have um, been married already and they are bringing their first child or second child into the clinic. Oh, but so, so my we... circle of friends, they are usually like between the range of 25 to 30. Yeah, I would say mm -hmm. in Germany, it's 30, uh, around 30. Around 30. For, for most of the people. Wait, actually, like it's slightly different from um, for guys and women. Yeah, maybe that's, yeah. Yeah, true. Maybe it's uh -huh. like for, for guys, I would say around 30, but maybe around for 30. women, because normally uh -huh. the, the woman in the relationship is a little bit younger. Oh, that's, that's the same like then. That's the typical same. in Germany, mm -hmm. same here. Yeah, that's the same. So then, then probably the, the, the woman normally is like, 25, mm, 27, mm. 28, around mm, that. That's right, that's right. So yeah, true. Maybe for women it's a little bit earlier the age, mm. but in general I would say in Germany around 30 is the age. Okay. And definitely with 29 and not being married, that's totally, so totally what, acceptable what, in no, Germany. No, but what do you think the, um, the range of um, our age at, you know, for getting married here in Malaysia? Yes. What about thinking about what you think? Yeah, you said like you thought it was way earlier. Yeah, so I thought like because all the taxi drivers are always so like, surprised that I'm not married yet. So the I thought it's like, like beginning of 20, like 23, Bing. 24, 25. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. It's mm. typical in Malaysia. I think maybe that was um, typical years ago, yeah. but not now. Okay. Not within my circle of friends at least. Yeah. But also, it, sure it, changed, it changed a lot in the last years and on the past centuries in Germany. Like, mm. for example, for, for the generation of my grandparents, mm. it was totally Way normal earlier, to right? get married around 20, I think, even. 20. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, at my grandparents' time, um, I think below 20. Even below 20. Below yeah, so, 20. so that changed a lot. And yeah, know. let me know in the comments you, are you already married? What, what age? Did you get married or what mm. age do you plan to get married? Let me know that in the comments. Or let the taxi drivers know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like normally because when I when I go to a taxi, like uh -huh. the conversations I have with the taxi drivers is 99% the same. Okay. They always ask me, oh, where are you from? Okay. What are you doing here? What is your age? And then like 80% of the drivers answer when I say I'm 29. Oh, and where's your wife? You travel alone? Where's your wife? Mm. <laughs> that's, that's really funny for me, yeah. All right, yeah, that's it from our cultural uh, experience lesson here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining and helping me once again and telling me about the Malaysian side yeah. uh, in this video. And yeah, let me know in the comments your thoughts about all the cultural differences, telling me a little bit about your side of the story. I would love to get to know some of your stories as well. Let me know in the comments and then thanks for watching. Thanks for joining today. And, Thank uh, you yeah. so much for watching, guys. Come back tomorrow, stay healthy, stay positive, and then uh, see you on the next video. Ciao!